Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching Channels Television, celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting. This is the news at 10, and here's a reminder of our major stories tonight. Muslims in Nigeria and their counterparts all over the world mark Eid al Kabir. President Buhari celebrates Eid al Kabir at his Daura country home in Katsina State, seeks understanding for his administration's efforts at revamping the economy. Another tremor hits Kaduna State barely 24 hours after the first rocked Nok village in Jaba local government area. And ceasefire comes into effect in Syria with coordinated airstrikes by the US and Russia against jihadist militants expected within seven days. Just a quick reminder to you that all our top stories are on our website, channelstv.com, and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. And do log on to m.channelstv.com to view us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS, and Windows phones from their respective stores. Besides the news and updates, the Channel TV app has an eyewitness feature. We encourage you to use it to share those pictures, videos, or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and then follow the instructions. Airtel, the smartphone network. Now we have some of those pictures that were sent in to us. And we can begin with this one showing a refuse heap taking over this roundabout at New Road near Sabungiri in Kano. Our eyewitness reporter wants the local government to evacuate the refuse. Next is one of these traders displaying their wares along the road in Ikonsu area of Lagos State. Our eyewitness reporter says their activities cause heavy traffic. Our next photo shows the aftermath of a road accident involving a commercial bus and a vehicle along Ikururu Road in Lagos State. Our eyewitness reporter advises motorists to adhere to traffic regulations. Let's end with this one, which shows a sports utility vehicle being pulled out of this flooded canal. Our eyewitness reporter calls on the government to build more effective drains. Airtel, the smartphone network. Thanks a lot for all your pictures and we ask you to send us some more. Muslims here in Nigeria are celebrating Eid al-Kabir, the Feast of Sacrifice. Joining me now to discuss the impact of the festival is an accountant and the Secretary General of the Ansaruddin Society of Nigeria, Lagos branch, Al-Hajji Abdul Latif Ibrahim. Thank you for joining us on the News at 10. Thank you very much. And Eid Mubarak to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Now we've seen um, the Muslim faithful perform their religious obligations today, um, yes. all through the day. Oh, yes. But we know it's a time when a lot of families are struggling. They don't have oh, yes. as much as they, as they did to spend. Yes. How, do you, how would you say the average Muslim family is celebrating Eid at this time? Quite all right. Uh, thank you very much. All the families in Nigeria, we are all living within the conditions that are really ravaging Nigeria now. Quite all right. There is economic recession. There is inflation. There are so many things that are really plaguing, particularly the downtrodden trodden Nigerians. But yet, the Muslims of all over Nigeria will celebrate this Eid al-Kabir according to how Allah wants it to be celebrated. But in terms of the you know, food, service, everything, there are certain differences because every family are being affected by the conditions, the economic conditions generally that are really affecting Nigeria. You know, the foods are not really easy to come by and most of the family cannot even feed their family satisfactorily. So this actually contributes to the celebration quite all right. And looking at the message um, of some of the clerics and even the yes. goodwill messages from the governors, they, they spoke about tolerance and living together and we always hear the talk of peace at times like this. But how would you assess religious tolerance within the country at the moment? How are we doing? Quite all right, Islam preaches peace. And peace is what Islam says. And if somebody look at the way the religious address in Nigeria, the way they take over their faith, one will actually see that there's an improvement from what has been happening from the past. There is now a very good tolerance among the three religions, that is the most important religion in Nigeria, 
we have the Islam, we have the Christianity, and we have the traditional uh, religion. You think so? so? With all the sectarianism? And oh, yes. Now, uh, the, the issue of sectarianism, Islam abhors sectarianism. There's nothing like, like sectarianism. Maybe what your mind might be doing is maybe this Boko Haram sects. In the real sense of it, all over the world, particularly in Nigeria, we don't accept them and we don't regard them as Muslims. Because the ideas, what they do, and what they do, contradict the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they are only doing what they are doing. Every Muslim condemns them. They are not sects. And in the real sense of it, when we are talking of sectarianism, quite all right, we are talking of Shiite, Shia, and the international world. But yet, we all believe in the fundamentals of Islam, that we hold unto one God, one Quran, we follow one Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we hold unto the one religion, which is Islam. Muslim can be different, it can be controversial, if that one is individualistic. It doesn't have any real effect on the tolerance among the Muslim states. Well, I was still going to ask you about yet another split which we saw with the Shiite group, I mean the Islamic movement of Nigeria against the army. How do you think that that was handled in, in, in terms of this tolerance you're talking about on both sides while you give your goodwill messages to us? Quite all right. No, the, 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 the religious tolerance has to do with personal feelings. It's not a general accepted principle. We have to tolerate ourselves because Islam teaches tolerance, that we need to tolerate ourselves. We, nobody owns this world. God created us and we are one kind, mark and family. We originated from the same parents, Adam and Eve. So we have to tolerate ourselves. The, the, the issue of belief, faith, is an opium of mind. And it's the way people always practice their religion. Quite all right, when you see army and some religious sect, they collide together, they fight. It depends upon individual and the way they understand the religion. Quite all right. There may be underneath political, you know, uh, acrimony, political factors, anything whatsoever. But then, religious tolerance, is, that is part of the Islamic teachings. All right. The Secretary General of the Ansaruddin Society mm. of Nigeria, Lagos mm. Branch, yes. Alhaji Abdul Latif Ibrahim. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us on the News at 10. Thank and Ibn Barak to you. Thank you very again. much. I'm very grateful. Let's cross over now to Abuja. Here's my colleague Ibrahim Adra. Hey, Ibrahim. Many thanks indeed, Ijoma. Now, still on the Sala, the festival may have again brought to the fore the challenged lifestyle of destitutes in a Butemeta area of Lagos. Our correspondent, Loretta Chiogo, who paid a visit to the destitutes' home, reports that few well meaning Nigerians have been their only source of help providing food and clothing. The Sala festival to these beggars on the popular Kano streets in Ibutemeta, Lagos, starts and ends with the morning prayers. The merriment that comes right after may just be a privilege if a helping hand is given by well-meaning Nigerians. They blame the government of the day for the lack of food to eat. But since today's Sala, we never see common pure water, we never see how much of food. So, see, we have so far in a load. That is the government. I promise us. They will buy this and they will do this and they will do this. And later on, see, we are doing nothing now. Gari 15 era, no deal. Rice 15 era, no deal. That is nothing you see. We, we are Muslim. We are not supposed to promise and fail. It's bad. It's a different ball game here at the destitute home in Okubaba, also in Lagos. This place has existed since the administration of the former military administrator of Lagos State, Brigadier General Muhammad Buba Marwa, some 21 years ago. Over 2,000 destitute persons made up of lepers, the lame, the blind, and the scums struggle space with refuse dump here. They are not left out of the Salah festival as the food, drinks, and clothes brought in by good Samaritans are shared. Although the country is facing a recession, life may be said to be good for some Muslim faithful as this cow waiting to be slaughtered goes beyond the traditional ram prescribed for the occasion. Loretta Chiogo, Channels Television. The Sultan of Sokoto, Al Haji Saad Abubakar III, says the so called Fulani herdsmen moving with guns, causing violence, fighting with farmers, are not Nigerians but foreign terrorists. 
the Sultan in his Eid al-Kabir message to the Muslim Ummah in Nigeria says that these are foreigners coming into Nigeria to cause a breach of the peace. According to him, quote, they are therefore terrorists and should be treated as such by the Nigerian security agencies. The Nigerian herdsmen are very peace-loving and law-abiding, end of quote. The Sultan, however, acknowledges that there are problems between Fulani herdsmen and farmers who should only be resolved through dialogue. The Socio-Economic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, is asking the United Nations to compel the federal government to desist from the, what the group describes as the intimidation of Bring Back Our Girls group. A statement issued by the Senior Staff Council of SERAP, Mr. Timothy Adewale, SERAP says this violates the rights of members to freedom of expression and peaceful assembly. Part of the statement reads, quote, No Nigerian law makes it a crime to demonstrate in any part of the country, end of quote. Sarabs asks that it considers restrictions placed on the Bring Back Our Girls group to peaceful assembly by law enforcement agencies as unjustified in law and in bad faith. The Independent National Electoral Commission has been explaining the reason behind the choice of September the 28th as a new date for the Edo State Governorship election. I'm speaking on our breakfast program, Sunrise Daily. INEC National Commissioner for Voter Education and Publicity, Mr. Solomon Suebi, said the decision was the only way to avoid a constitutional crisis. It's a process which we planned six months ago. It's now being set back. So the earlier we had that uh, election and get it over, the better for us because they could be what we call this uh, constitutional lacuna. Governorship in an election in Edo must take place at least one month before the expiration of the date of the incumbent. The reverse logistics, that is removing all our things back to the office, will not take us anything less than two weeks. Out of these two weeks, we have two days already, today and tomorrow public holiday. We still work on Saturday. We have to reconfigure over 4,000 smart card readers. That will not take anything less than 10 days. As still ahead of the news at 10, policy analysts ask federal government to accelerate 2016 budget implementation as the country tackles economic recession. That's on business news. Do join us again.